So here we see a brittle star, uh, quite a beautiful one on a, and you can tell this is a tropical one because it's sitting on a uh, coral, which is in the phylum, test yourself. That's right, Nidaria. Here is a basket star with its arms unfurled for filter feeding or suspension feeding. Here's another one uh, with its arms unfurled. And you might think that this is a coral or a plant of some sort, an algae, but uh, it's actually an animal. Here is a basket star with its arms folded up. Um, very interesting also if you test yourself on the other phyla that you can see here. So we've got Nidaria and we've got Periphera in this image as well. Okay, Ophiroidea. They have a central disc and arms, which are more distinctly separated from the disc than we saw in Asteroidea. So the uh, central disc seems like more of a distinct unit. No ambulacral grooves. Um, they do have a water vascular system and their two feet are almost never used in for movement like we saw in Asteroidea, but mostly in feeding. And they have no suckers, the tube feet. They're more like clubs. And no anus. They have a two-way gut, so they pull food in, digest it, and then expel it. So here is one of the common brittle stars that you'll see around uh, uh, the Bay of Plenty. Okay, this is the mottled brittle star. Here's another common uh, shallow local one. This is an ore star, ored star, and uh, here is a, a snake star. Okay, so these are three of the very common um, brittle stars that you'll find uh, around here in New Zealand on the shallow intertidal or shallow uh, subtidal environment. And you can notice here how distinct the um, the central disc is to the arms as compared to when, what we were looking for, looking at in classic starfish, the Asteroidians. The arms are divided into segmented sections. So when you look at a brittle star, you'll see segments. And they have um, long muscles that provide the arm movement. We'll look at that a little bit more later, uh, rather than two feet. And each section, each of the segments has four ossicles called shields and one pair of podia, which are two feet. So here are where you can see the repeated segments. They've got lateral spines and the two feet coming out and you can see that those two feet look a little more like clubs than they do uh, having suckers. The central disc is to the left and then you'll see the repeated segments moving down the length of the arm. A little closer look, you can see the lateral spines and the two feet and how the segments repeat. So much like annelids uh, with repeating segments, but they're obviously different. They don't have parapodia. They've got these um, this skeletal uh, shields, which are very different to the um, uh, the annelids, which have no nothing like the ossicles. All right, so let's build a segment. Okay, you can see the substrate at the bottom, and the aboral shield. This is one segment of a brittle star arm. Aboral remember, is uh, the opposite to the oral side. The oral side is with the mouth. The aboral shield will face up. The oral side faces down towards the substrate in Ophiroidea. 
Let's add an oral shield at the bottom. Remember these have four shields each, uh, each segment. Okay, then you add lateral shields. And almost invariably, the lateral shields have lateral spines coming off of them. Then we add, then we add two feet um, facing down towards the uh, bottom. So the tube feet, as you can see, have no suckers. They're just um, they're just like clubs. All right, and then this is a, obviously more professional drawing. Um, the you can see the um, all of the striped sections are the muscles. So they have four large longitudinal muscles that run down the length of the arm. Okay, and you can see the two feet connecting to the radial canal and the lateral canal. So these do have a water vascular system, just like we've looked at in the overview video. Uh, here you can see um, at this link, or you type Brittle Star Scuffle into YouTube search, and you'll get a uh, really nice view of how the uh, brittle stars use their longitudinal muscles to move rather than their two feet. So you take that segment that you've built and just repeat it over and over and over. And then if the end of it gets bitten off or broken off, which is why they're called brittle stars because these things do break away quite easily, you just repair it so they, they can regrow those arms. Okay, the podia, or tube feet, are reduced and extend between the oral and lateral shields. We've seen that. And they are, uh, they have a madreporite, just like we saw in the asteroid, located on one of the oral shields of the central disc. Feeding, they can be carnivores or scavengers. Um, they may use be deposit feeders or they may be filter feeders like we saw the ones that uh, the basket stars that um, that stick their arms up into the current unfold them and then have mucus slung between the spines for collecting plankton or whatever comes sticks to it out of the water column so often you'll find that you'll find the uh, brittle stars by turning over rocks or looking within the, um, the uh, very jumbled, very uh, elaborate uh, substrate that is within like what we looked at in the uh, dock fuzz. And you'll find them within protective retreats, but they'll stick their arms out in order to feed. Okay, and uh, the mouth has five large plates or jaws that come together uh, like the slices of a pie rather than our mouths which have two uh, jaws and this is a nice um, URL that shows a little bit about the feeding. So we'll cover this in class a little bit but you could, if you look at the diagrams on B and C the two feet actually hold on to the little bolus of food. So this is the, uh, the mucus, uh, sticky, uh, the sticky mucus that has the, the food particles in it, and they pass it down the length of the arm, uh, much as you'd pass down uh, a, um, uh, much as you'd pass down a, like a water balloon if you were passing it down a length of, a line of people and then that just goes into the into the mouth so they don't actually have to unfurl their arm and put it into their mouth okay um, they have these things called bursa within the central disc in order to gas it for gas exchange and here you can see the bursa 
on the right. So these are ciliated, and the cilia create a water movement. They beat, They're like the flagella in periphera, and they create water movement into, their, uh, into these bursa. And then they have a circulatory system that carries oxygenated uh, uh, fluid around the, uh, down the length of the arm. You can also see the jaws, which uh, can, are used to masticate food, and that goes into the stomach. Now it only shows two jaws here, but they have five jaws. And you can see that they have a one-way gut, or sorry, a two-way gut, where they have only one opening into the stomach. Cr class Crinoidea, which are uh, the sea lilies and um, feather stars, are um, very, very similar to uh, Ophiroidea, or the um, brittle stars and basket stars, but um, they have a couple of other features. Uh, one is that their mouth faces up and the other are these little arms that you can see that are grasping at the substrate. These are um, another type of arm that they have coming off of their central disc. So they are pretty much sessile, okay? So where sea lilies and basket stars will move around, these ones almost never move around. They find one spot and they stay there. Uh, they're mostly in quite deep water, um, and they, they're the only class of Echinodermata that has the mouth facing upwards. Okay. So, again, if we look at that first picture that we saw, we have these arms called cirri, which are gripping arms and then the other arms um, face up into the, into the current. The calyx is another name for the central disc, and the mouth faces upwards. There's another picture of a New Zealand uh, sea star, or, or sorry, feather star. Um, here is uh, one that you can see the central disc quite easily. And here is a sea lily. These are in deep water. Another picture of the sea lilies and you can see how they, um, they have their baskets up into, the, up into the water column to filter out sea, uh, particles that are in the water column. And the crinoids uh, only have about 80 species, all living greater than 100 meters. Um, and they usually are, uh, the, the sea lilies are the ones with the attachment stalk. So these ones are up on a, a long stalk. So they're an old, um, class of organisms. They've been around for a long time. They tend now to be outcompeted um, suspension feeding in shallow water. So they're more of a remnant in deeper water, the sea lilies. Here's a fossil sea lily. Guess it's a little bit bigger. Um, so uh, well, you can read this section. Again, um, very similar to what we've talked about. And here you see the, um, the um, mouth face, uh, a depiction of the mouth that is facing upwards. Okay, and the anus and the mouth are both facing upwards in the crinoidea. Sea lilies can't move at all. Feather stars can move, uh, crawl, or swim over short distances, but mostly these ones are 
the um, Cecil of the uh, class Echinodermata. <laughs>